It's not because it was making a lot of fuzz. Nothing. Don't worry about it. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name.
all right, Pastor Mark, guess what we're going to do? A couple of things. Okay. We're going to hang up a phone, <laughs> but I'm going to have you also please use the lapel. Okay. You're, yeah, you're scaring them right now. You're going, you're going in and out, oh. not on your problem, on the microphone's problem. And so we are just going to turn this one all the way off. You can use your guitar. Let me hang up a phone. <laughs> All right. And boy, it's just, it's, it's one of, happy Father's Day to everyone that is a father. And uh, it is good to see each and every one of you here today as we welcome you uh, into God's house this morning. And just get my thoughts in order. I mean, it, sometimes you ever have those things where something just, a door stays locked. <laughs> and you're like, well, how do I do this? Um, we were doing a few things in here, and my mind slipped, and which is not like it's uncommon because it does that once in a while. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you came in, and hey, the door, we had the side door open, and the, do the, the door is locked. Oh, man, that's right. And then, uh, okay. No, 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 not on purpose. But I will say this. It is so good. Now, look around. It is really cool because we have visitors. It's really cool. And uh, some from Idaho and some from Illinois. We are just kind of spanning the globe here a little bit of America. And so it is really cool to have those that are here visiting this morning. Welcome. I hope you guys have some fun. You are, and you, you don't have to, but you are welcome to go downstairs in a little bit. And there is, you're going to do a little thing. You can do it for your dads or someone that you enjoy. It's a, 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 a I hope we brought a camera, correct? Yes. So you are able to do, there's a, a craft for your dad that you can do. And there's a, a, a hard crossword, you, not crossword, word search you can do. And there is actually a, a Bible story that is kind of cool. And then there is uh, a game that is totally awesome. <laughs> and uh, so if you like, uh, you can, uh, when, when Michelle goes down, you guys can go down with her and she will have a Bible lesson down there with all those things that I'm talking about. I'm telling you, I say it out loud because one, one day uh, there's going to be adults that are going to go down there and go, I have got to see this. Faces in the Cool Whip, uh, hands in the Jello. And, and then it's a little Italiano today. I'll just say it that way. And so uh, you can ask the kids what they did um, for uh, their little lesson on uh, how Jesus heals. And so it's really cool that it's going to take place uh, this morning with the kids down in Kids Zone. This week, we are going to pause some activities for the week. Uh, uh, someone came in today and mentioned today is the First day of summer, correct? First day of summer. And so, you know, when, when, when that was said to me, it, it really brought back to me the, um, I, I miss Brother Bud. They're doing very well. Um, but he was always on it. He knew what, what was happening within the calendar year. And I'm not that good. I already told you my mind slips a little bit. But then people come in and say, hey, certain things. And so, yeah, it is a glorious first day of summer. You know, it is just gorgeous out there. So welcome for the first day of summer, but we are going to pause for one week, a Wednesday night Bible study. Actually, it's Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. So we're not going to meet this Wednesday. I'm going to take this Wednesday and, and pause, spend time with family and enjoy that one week. That's all you get. No. <laughs> Pastor Mark teaches the Wednesday uh, afternoon Bible study and the book of Exodus right now. And it there's some things, boy, we've, we were, well, we're about to get into, hey, learn 10 things, right? <laughs> That'll be in two Wednesdays, taking this Wednesday off. And we're also going to pause, also going to pause the Tuesday, Thursday kind of gathering. I call it computer communications community or something, uh, computer conversation community gathering. And we're going to pause that for one week also and just uh, spend, I'm going to spend some time with family before they 
Well, actually, they are wearing us out too. And so, uh, man, I love the beach, but boy, a couple of times, it, 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 it kind of wears you out a little bit. But it was last Wednesday. I'm going to tell you this. Um, besides welcoming you here, just give me a moment, is I believe that, and I, I spoke to someone, I'll talk about it in prayer, that we are such a church family. And when you get to spend some time with church family, it is awesome. We spent like three hours with Pastor Mark and his family <laughs> at the beach. And I'll tell you what, and then it was Wednesday, so we're at the beach for the, these hours and eating and laughing and, oh my goodness, uh, one of the gentlemen, and I, I'm going to stop mentioning names, but I know, man, that dude was in the water on the board almost all three hours, it seemed like, catching every wave he could catch. And when we came to Bible study, he was actually laying on the pew looking at his phone, I think. And I thought, you know what? That's me. I am exhausted. It was so much fun to mingle with church family. And I encourage you to do it. We had, and I'm going to say it this way, we didn't even know, but there was even a, a situation where families went to a ball game together. They weren't, didn't quite know it, but coming in and just, I, guy, it's a joy to me when I hear the conversations that people have with one another as we gather together, welcoming each other. But that, 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 that crazy pastor, it, he will probably still do a Hello Again Wednesday. I always say, I, in fact, I changed it. I think I, I did not change it in the bulletin. It does say 10 to 15 minutes. And like right now, when I look at it, it's more like 18 <laughs> I think I think 18 minutes. Uh, I think it's even too long for TikTok or whatever. I don't know, but I will do something, and I, I enjoy just kind of having a conversation that way. You can always check it out at ColverCityChurchOfGod.org. They're on there all the time. They're on. We actually have a YouTube page, um, which is Culver City Church of God YouTube, and so uh, they're on there along with messages and sermons. You can catch them, and uh, it is not just me. There's others that are preaching and stuff. And so, hey, oh, wow, there's a lot of things we can change. Um, I, want, I will say this. Thank you for being a respectful, honoring people, okay? Um, and we will continue to do that in love in all the things that we do. Um, we will continue to, I'm going to keep the water fountain off for just a little bit, okay? but we will continue to have water on the table. If you would like a bottle of water, you need a bottle of water. As the kids go downstairs, if they need a bottle, there's a few down there, but if they need one, they can snag one off the table. There's plenty uh, to take downstairs as they, when they have their thing. And so that's what we're going to do for just a little bit. Man, it is so good to see each and every one of you this morning. I also want to say thank you to those. I know that they're on the phone right now. We still provide that, that free uh, conference call, and so they are joining us with worship. Um, I sent out emails to them. I sent out text messages and stuff, so it is good to have people that cannot be here still worshiping with us, okay? They also do it on Facebook, and, and it, it's just a joy. Uh, I did a crazy one on last Wednesday and got some responses on uh, some things. So check it out. Uh, people are, they're joining us in the things that we are doing as a church. And that's exciting. Um, the last thing is uh, before I say thank you, um, I will emphasize some of the things that are taking place within the church. And that is us wanting to support missionaries and other uh, uh, things that are taking place within Southern California even. We are a church here, and we have, not this year, the pandemic really kind of messed things up for kids, but we're unable to send them to camp. But next year, um, we've in fact, I, I sit on a board, and we have already lined up with the camp. The camp has been wonderful to us as an association, allowing us to not lose our deposit, it costs money to send kids to camp. Instead of losing that, they just pushed it to the next year for us. And that's wonderful. That's a praise. And so, but it still takes money to send kids to camp that are here with us. 
and the missionaries that are in uh, uh, Botswana, Africa. And then, um, you know what? I told you that finances aren't just for the building and stuff like that. Ah, in the next few weeks, they are for the building. Some of it is for the building. And uh, if you ever go, if you go downstairs, like where the kids are at, right now they have one of their activities in a refrigerator that is had its, it's on no legs now. Usually you say a last leg, it's no legs now. Um, about five weeks ago, I had a conversation with Pastor Mark that the fire department's not going to come because it's not on fire but, or anything like that. But <laughs> we had two refrigerators. They were twins. And one went out during the pandemic for a, a long time ago. Almost like at the beginning of the pandemic, it went out. It was bad. So um, I actually got rid of that one, and I tried replacing it with another used one that just it just kept frosting up it was it was would be more of a hassle to have it so i got rid of that one too so the second twin after five weeks of our conversation of we'll see how i, I i'm gonna beat it to death and let it go as long as what it could and i walked in this morning and it is not working so a lot of times when tithes and offerings come in, it, it does support things which we will end up uh, uh, purchasing a refrigerator. And think of it this way. For the kids, their stuff goes in it and, and, and keeps things chilled. When we have uh, uh, Tuesday, Thursday things, things get chilled. Um, can we look down the road possibly? I'm, I'm going to be optimistic. I'm not saying... I'm just going to be optimistic. Could we possibly be looking at a Thanksgiving dinner this year? It's months away. We have the opportunity to watch and see what's happening. You know, that's why I'm saying it's not in stone. But man, doesn't that just kind of excite you just a little bit? You know why? Because Thanksgiving dinners are fun. Uh, there's some work. Some of you are like, yeah, yeah some, but you know what? It is fun. Uh, I, I say that word because that's the message of the day. <laughs> have fun, okay? But could we possibly do that? Or maybe Christmas? Or a gathering just to gather? Okay, that's... So it would take some refrigerators to be replaced, okay? I'm just saying it that way. In saying all of that, take your mind away from the twin refrigerators and think, you know what? We as a church, we thank you so much for the gifts that you do give. We have offering plates in the middle. We have an offering plate up at the front. Anytime during the service, if you'd like to give, you can. After the service, if you'd like to put your offerings in or your gifts in, you can. We appreciate it so much because it does help do ministry. And what is when I say do ministry, what does that even mean? It gives us the opportunity to share what we have with others and just maybe they might come to know Jesus as their Savior. That's what this place is all about. There's a lot that goes into it, and some of it is having fun. Look around, see who's here, uh, be uh, happy. That was last week. <laughs> and uh, whoever's not here that you see, give them a call. Give them a, a, a little hello and see how they're doing. And you'll be surprised at the reaction. Um, we have been in contact with a couple of people this week. And it's exciting that they, they, they might not be in the pew, but man, they're still a part of the congregation. And that's exciting. Welcome, welcome, welcome this morning. Probably the longest welcome we've ever had, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Pastor Mark and, and Christian, come continue to lead us in worship.
was the welcome and announcements and also there's another page in there that is the prayer request that we have uh, throughout the week and uh, there's things that come and go and are uh, change and uh, some things that are a phone call away and even though it's been printed already we still remember them and um, I had a phone call this morning from Susan Susan's legs are um, she's in pain and uh, she's not doing very well and so she called this morning I actually prayed with her I always do if someone calls I, I will pray with them um, then but then at the same time remind them that uh, we as a as a family that gather we will pray also um, throughout uh, this prayer time that we have so we want to remember especially Susan there's many on our list who um, have a need for healing, uh, a, a need for finances, uh, a need as they are in ministry, such as uh, Corey and Abby Stocksdale and their three kids over in Botswana uh, as uh, missionary work. And then there's things that are taking place uh, with our community. Um, and so we remember our community leaders as well as state and as well as are uh, national and then it reminds it to me it always reminds me once i keep going out uh farther and farther with my thoughts is uh worldwide with family members that we have in other countries and their um things that they have going on with them also there are some sad things that have taken place that are on the list and that we have been praying for and in connection to uh, pastor mark's uh when he was a teacher with the uh, alumni association that he's in as a teacher, uh, one of the gentlemen, Steve had a, a Steve K had a stroke. I don't, I just put, I just put usually last letters for individuals to say it out loud. Steve uh, had passed away. And so um, 
just kind of, it's sad. So we want to continue to remember his family um, during this grieving time that they have uh, that has taken place. Uh, I also want to uh, uh, remember the churches that are surrounding us, that um, the ministries that they have as they meet the needs of people that we are not connected to, it's a huge connection thing. And so we pray for the churches that are um, ministering right now. Um, there's a praise. Many churches, not, churches I, I know we've been meeting, but many churches are now opening their doors and providing opportunity. So we pray for our brothers and sisters that are doing ministry also. That uh, we also want to, and I'll forget some. There's there's those that are I am, that are on our list. Always remembering the Foldies and their family, uh, Bud and Jane, um, as they are up in Mission Hills. There's individuals, Phyllis, who is up in Reseda. I'll continue to pray for her because um, as uh, individuals that can handle the legal ends of on both ends, her home and where she's staying, um, our meeting and ha starting to handle things. But we need to pray for Sister Phyllis's situation. And then I will stop with this, always with praise if we can. And so uh, speaking with Trini uh, on the list uh, this past week, we've been praying for her son's girlfriend who has a nephew, just a, a young boy who had a growth on his brain, had surgery, successful surgery. And uh, so we continue to uh, ask God's anointing healing as he continues to gain strength. That is a praise that takes place. There's probably many other praises. Um, I'm only going to mention that for the moment. If there are things on your heart and you would like me to remember anything that is going on in your life and you would like me to pray for you, especially this week, um, I will continue to pray for you. Okay? Yes. And I will continue. By, I will pray for you that have raised their hands. And then, I, you know what? Uh, Brother Keith, we want to especially remember your mom. Um, his mom... She's up there. <laughs> and uh, as we get older, we need more things. Uh, and so we want to continue to remember. Lucille, every time I think of her, I remember this, you know, everyone has their same spots sometimes. And so she really would love to be here, but health reasons are kind of hindering her. And she had a rough week last week. So let's remember Lucille, especially as we pray. We're going to sing one verse abide with me, and then, it, you know what? If you'd like, you can always come and pray at the altars, too. can gather in this place, not because it's a, uh, a building to just come into, but God, we honor you. Uh, your presence is always with us, inside and outside of this building, but we come here together as a family of God to praise you, to honor you, to be reminded of your holiness, to be reminded of how much you love us. God, we thank you that in these moments, we know how much uh, you care for us. 
If there are some here that are struggling with that, God, I ask your Holy Spirit to just uh, impress upon them to know that you are here with us. You know everything about our situations. You know everything that has been spoken about, uh, a list that we have gathered, and we are grateful that even before pen went to paper, you knew everything that was taking place. But we join together and will continue throughout this week to, to lift up our brothers and our sisters, our co-workers and our friends with the many requests that we have. God, we ask that you'll um, allow your spirit to just uh, do what is in your will. Help us to have our hearts and our minds and our ears open to understand what you are doing. There are many things, God, that we thank you for those that are that you help with uh, health, finances, and home. We especially remember our missionaries, God. Uh, we ask an anointing upon their ministry. There are the hands that have been raised here. God, we um, help us to remember our brothers and sisters throughout this week with uh, needs that are um, upon their hearts asking us to remember especially them in prayer this week. God, we are grateful that even in the things that we do not mention in these moments, you still know everything that is needed. God, we thank you that we have an opportunity to give our, our, our time and our talents and even our gifts of offering to you, God. Please, uh, we ask an anointing upon the gifts that are given. Help them to uh, multiply for the furtherance of your ministry, for the furtherance of uh, what we as a people here can do for you and in your name. God, we ask that it'll be for your glory in the things that we do also. We especially remember other ministries that are taking place even outside with the surrounding churches, God, and anointed upon them. God, we ask also that you will help our ears to be in tune as we delve into Scripture this morning. May it uh, be an inspiring inspiration, two things together that might even cheer us on, make us happy, draw us close to you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is from Ecclesiastes, and I'm going to be reading from chapter 15, verses 16 through 20. And this also is a severe evil. Just exactly as he came, so shall he go. And what profit has he who has labored for the wind? All his days he also eats in darkness, and he has much sorrow and sickness and anger. Here is what I have seen. It is good and fitting for one to eat and drink, and to enjoy the good of all his labor, in which he toils under the sun all the days of his life which God gives him, for it is his heritage. As for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth, and given power to eat of it, to receive his heritage and to rejoice in his labor, this is a gift of God. For he will not dwell unduly on the days of his life, because God keeps him busy with the joy of his heart. I read that New Testament reading as well, and that is Romans 12, 9-18. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging indulgence. Fervent in spirit, sober in word, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints. 
given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Last week, I had titled the uh, sermon, Be Happy, and uh, this week, I'm going to go with Have Fun, and we're going to connect fun with uh, Father's Day. Um, problem is with me is uh, I usually have like dumb dad jokes or something like that. I'm not going to do a joke, uh, but... Do you ever have something that just kind of hits you kind of strange like, you know? And, and it happened just moments ago with a dad, okay? This dad grew. I mean, he grew exponentially. Is that how you say it? I mean, he grew quite a bit. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Pastor Mark, this is really short, isn't it? <laughs> I, see, some of you probably don't. I, some things just catch my eye. Like, what? No, something's different. What's different? Man, that thing, that thing got down. It's usually up here so you can see the music. And, and uh, uh, hey, we, just joking. Come on, I'm going to have some fun. Just joking. We, if you come to Bible study, in fact, we had a great suggestion that maybe we should have like extra uh, reading glasses or maybe even some magnifying glasses. And, and because, let's be honest, I mean, my Bible, my Bible is big print. And, and, and uh, the Bible in your pew is small. And I have even heard this past week, there's Bible print that's even smaller. And so to have words so far away and you're trying to leave, I'm like, oh my goodness, that shrunk. <laughs> Little things um, catch my attention. Not locked doors. That doesn't catch my attention. That's, that, I guess, would kind of be like, what in the world? Yes, it happened. Uh, you, you know what? And I, I say it in fun. Uh, I really did this past, let's see, it was Wednesday, had a, a blast with uh, uh, the boys and the grandkids and just um, having some fun. And then all of a sudden, a, what was it, a day later? No, it was that night. <laughs> That's how long that day went. We had fun with, with Pastor Mark and his family, and then that night, uh, three more grandkids showed up at our door. <laughs> we went and picked them up at the airport, and, and we didn't do it on Thursday, but they really wanted to go to the beach. So uh, we, we did do it Friday, and uh, one of the, bo the boys uh, got buried. No, both boys, I think it was. I can't remember. I know one. One was just laughing the whole time he was getting shoveled over. What was it? Cameron, Cameron was laughing while he was getting shoveled over. Was he with Eve, uh, with uh, uh, Elijah? Both of them were in the, in the hole, right? And I guess Cameron was just laughing and laughing with each shovel mark, uh, each shovel stroke that buried that boy up to here. And, and then they ran down. Uh, while some of them were up there, one ran down and got us. You got, Cameron wants you to see him in the sand. That boy, I'm telling you, if you look around, you will see individuals having fun. As, as uh, some of the restrictions have, well, actually almost all, everything restriction-wise is gone. There's still a tiny minute thing, but 
you know, more and more people are having fun and enjoying each other. Um, and like I said, if you listen, you'll, you'll hear these things. Um, we, um, we were, the parsonage is, we've been there almost 12 years now. There are two parks that are in walking distance. One is so close, it's half a block. And it's at a da dangerous intersection, but it is a half a block. And from day one, pretty much, we have called it the Blue Park. And because there's a blue ship, there's blue, blue the, the cushiony stuff is blue, it's a blue park. The other one, a little bit farther away, it has some orange, and so it is the Orange Park. And that is how the grandkids for years have determined, a, we don't call it Glen Alla, it's the Blue Park. And so uh, that's been taking place. And this past week, more people were showing up at the park. And this young lady with her, this young girl with her friend, about the age probably of Sophia or something like that, was running to the swings, talking about the Blue Park. And I'm like, wow, that's a catchy phrase. <laughs> they were having a blast, though, having fun. Okay. I'm going to get into, I'm actually going to delve into some scripture about fun. Uh, well, before I do that, I want to say this. Happy Father's Day to the fathers that are here, the fathers that are listening. The fa there, there are even father-like figures. There, meaning this, there are men who are involved in the lives of other kids in a father-like experience, father-like figure, and then I am grateful that some of them are godly men that are father-like figures. That means the generation that's coming up as they are hugging on them and taking care of them and taking them under their wing, they are growing up in a, with a godly leader. And I, I hope that uh, every Father's Day, I would hope that it would just be a reminder that there are men that are godly men that are helping individuals. And you know what, guys is one of the hardest, it's one of the lowest percentages of godly leaders. Um, mothers, women are a greater percentage of godly leaders. And so I, same thing on Mother's Day. I don't forget, there are godly leaders, and that's a good thing. Okay, so connecting good godly men with a little bit of fun. Ready? If you have your Bibles, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. I'll pause at the one that really sticks out, which will be verse 4. That's where I'll pause for a sec. For everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. You ever read scripture and, and a song pops in your head? Then it, it like the mama and the papas or something like that. Turn, turn, turn or something like that. And so everything there, for everything, there is a season for a time, every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, quite obvious. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. Verse 4, a time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. I'm going to pause right there. I, I do like verse 4. It, it just stuck in my head for one reason, and that was because it had the word laugh in it. A time, because there have been times where, where I, I don't know about you, but I have cried, and laughing is way better than crying. I have danced. Not great. 
but I have also grieved. This, you know, we were talking earlier this morning about today is the first day of summer, and that's really, really um, exciting. Uh, I love summer. Um, summer is probably one of my favorites. Yesterday was, um, in fact, uh, President Biden signed it into um, it is a, a federal holiday, and that is Juneteenth. Okay, June nineteenth, and if you if you looked into it. It, it, it is, it's really a cool holiday in this sense because as I read Ecclesiastes chapter three, all of this took place before what happened on June, 3, June 19th. And I don't not, uh, it was probably 1865, 1865. And let me help you, because if you've never, June 19th, in September of 1862, President Abraham Lincoln did the Emancipation Proclamation. That in January of 1863, it was instated. And for a time of, of, uh, of uh, embrace, a time of, in, of dance, a time of love, a time of peace, that took place. Now, here's the thing. It did not take place for everyone. The Emancipation Proclamation was to end slavery. And so as people heard about it, they rejoiced. No longer. They were free. Everyone wants to be free. And what took place, though, it took from 63 to 65, it, what, what happened was, down in Texas, see, war is terrible. The, the, the Civil War was just devastating. And it affected state after state after state. And like with any war or with any advancement of war of any type, it's not that you conquer the whole thing. You take this piece, this piece, this piece until you win the, ba the, the war. You take this battle, this battle, until you win the war. And it took two years to get down to Galveston, Texas, where the, the Union troops came in, defeated the Confederate troops in Galveston, and, and then because of that defeat, now the slaves were really free. Just because, and I love, uh, President Abraham Lincoln was one of my favorites. Um, one reason, I lived in Illinois. <laughs> and so you talk about textbook learning, it was big. But when you get into what he did, it was huge. And I really liked Abraham Lincoln, but it took two years for that great news to be enacted in Texas um, when the Confederate troops were defeated. And do you know what happened? When they were defeated, there were church services. They gathered and gave God praise for freedom. And with, see, with that, that's how this, it takes place. It is a federal holiday now, but when you go to, um, it, it, it's be, true beginnings would have been Abraham Lincoln saying, people are free, okay? To, to make it work, it had to have a battle and battle and battle, but then it comes down to Texas, so they mark off Texas as the big one. And now that it's the big one, we gather together and we should celebrate freedom for all people. With prayer, maybe with a church service, with, with celebrations, they had food. With dancing, yeah, they were that thrilled to be free. And so that's what it is that takes place. Now, I know there's probably more and more to it that people put on it, but that's the gist of it. We're, we're people to be free. Now, can I say this? And, and I will always honor Juneteenth because of that freedom. But it still reminds me of this. 
Do you realize that the battles are still going on for freedom of people? And I believe what Abraham Lincoln said was not, I mean, it was written out in such a way, but here in 2021, we have to realize that it's not just, it should not be just for a people of color, it should be for all people to have freedom. Do you realize that down in Long Beach, I believe, uh, this was uh, uh, about six years ago when I heard it, it is one of the hottest spots of sex slave trades. So yes, there is still slavery going on. Little kids are being snatched up into slavery and sold for sex. So when I look at slavery in its entirety, those kids are not free. And so it's a battle that needs to be won. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If we take what a great man wrote out and as for freedom, we should take that and keep pressing on that all people are free. And when they become free, we should pray. When they become free, we should have services. When they become free, we should gather together and join in in a celebration with food or whatever. Or maybe we could even do just a little jig. I told you, I, I stink at it. But you know what? Man, I'll tell you, when, if, when the music is cranking, my foot is stomping. You know, that's my dance, I guess. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There's a time, there's a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to grieve over what is happening, and a time to dance. Can I go? I'm going to go on. I'm at verse 9. What do people really get for all their hard work? Have I seen, I have seen the burden of God. Excuse me. Let me start verse 10 again. I have seen the burden God has placed on us all. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So I concluded there's nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the first fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God. Man, as, as I was reading that, I was like, wow, it's written in such a way that can go in so many directions and you can really delve in deep. But I'm going to just, as I read this to you and you hear it, maybe even for the first time, some of it you're like, oh yeah, I've heard those lines before. But some of this makes so much sense to me in its simplicity. You know what? That God has made everything beautiful for its own time. God is in control. People don't understand that God is in control. God knows what's taking place with every step that takes place. Not only that, but know this. He planted eternity in the hearts of people. We need to learn how to accept our Savior, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, who died on the cross. He shed his blood so that we could have that eternity with him. It is given. You can have it. That's what God wants. That's his whole plan. And I do understand that we, it is hard to see the scope of everything that is of God from beginning to end. But man, I sure love each step of the way of it. And I, oh, wow. It's also one where you have to be very careful. There are a lot of people that would take these verses and go, woo, this is a time to run and thank you, Pastor, for giving me that sign. Have fun. Man, am I going to have fun today? And man, am I going to drink? And, and, and am I going to eat? Am I going to be uh, happy? And I'm going to just enjoy everything that, that is just around me and that's mine. I'm going to go to all extents of what I think is the best. Thank you, Pastor. Please don't put my name in your sin. <laughs> I'm going to start that way. Actually, I'm not going to start that way. I'm going to start this way. You ready? Proverbs 15, verse 13. 
Proverbs 15, verse 13 says, a glad heart makes a happy face. A broken heart crushes the spirit. You ever sit in a church and, and, and if, like I said, if you listen, you'll hear people say, you know, that person never smiles. That person is such, you, you, come, let's be honest, you can tell grumpy people. That person's grumpy all the time. They're angry at something all the time. They come to church angry. They leave the church angry. And, and the, the saddest part of it is their spirit is truly crushed. Because when you have the happiness of God, as I was talking about last week, when you have God who is working within your life and bringing about the things that are, as I said in Ecclesiastes, that are beautiful, that he has planned out for you, your steps he has, it makes a happy face. That is why people walk around and do this other thing. You, know, you must go to church. There's something about you. See, that's the other thing. You can tell grumpy, angry people. You can also tell real, real, real church people. There's something about you. Why are you so excited? This stinks around me. Yeah, but you know what? Guess what? No matter what happens around me, God's got me. Don't matter. Let me keep going. Proverbs 17, verse 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. If you're ever walking around today going, man, this, I, I, I feel so done. I'm done. This is, I can't handle this. This is, this burden is too heavy. All of this stuff crushing around me. This is too much. I'm going to tell you what, one of our problems, we decide that everything is too much for us and we just quit. Rather than turning to one who gives strength, rather than turning to one who has everything for you to fix things, who has everything to bring you through things, and, and that should cheer you up. It just should. It does me. I'll be an example. I will be an example. The things that God does and pulls me through. I love, uh, it's hard to say this. It's easy to say this now. It's hard to say it then. I love all the bad things I've gone through where God has pulled me through it. So that when something comes up so close to being like it, no problem. God had me then. He's got me now. I got this. A cheerful heart is good medicine. Man, let's fix ourselves a little bit. Not like that. I'm just saying. Understand, if a cheerful heart is good medicine, I guess I have to say it this way. What's in your heart? How about James chapter 5, verse 13? Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Now you might understand why my foot's always stomping. At, at, well, you don't see it all the time. At home when I'm studying, at home when I'm doing something on the computer, whew, man, I, I have some loud music going into the headphones and my leg is going 100 miles an hour. You know what? Come in, if, you came into, if you came into church probably around 6 a.m., you <laughs> there's some having fun downstairs right now. <laughs> you would have heard some, probably some loud guitars as I was just enjoying time with God here. Okay, let me keep going. Let him sing praise if you're cheerful. And then I was, now I will say this. Be careful. See, to uh, know that you have the ability to have such fun, you have the ability to eat. Some people say, what, eat, drink, and be merry? You can have that. But be very, very careful. First Peter chapter 2, verse 16 says, Live as people who are free not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. See, in, in having fun, when I say be careful, always know, always know whose hand you're in. You're in God's hand. Always know who you are representing. You're representing God. 
Uh, another area of scripture, and I don't have looked up at the moment, but I do. I, this always pops in my head. You are an ambassador of Christ. What does that mean? You represent him. When you go over here, you as an ambassador are going to this place representing Christ. Now, can you have fun representing Christ? Oh, I, I know you can. Be very careful. Don't let it cover up evil. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. Uh, do you understand what I'm talking about here for just a moment? You can be having a blast, having a whole ton of fun, and, and it becomes evil or a sinful thing that someone who is weak looks at you, the ambassador of Christ, and says, wow, if they're doing that, then, excuse me, I could do it. Then I could do it. And, uh, and if I can do it, then I can go downhill with it. For me, one of the easiest thought processes of that, are you ready? Is that if, uh, if you are a uh, one who, I'm just going to say, it. if you're one who can handle a drink and you invite one of your close friends who is a brand new believer in Christ and you know that if they have that one drink, they will spiral down into alcohol. By, actually, let, let me... Don't say the words such as alcoholism. They will drink, 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 drink till they're just stupid drunk, probably throwing up drunk because they drank with you. You could handle it, but they couldn't. You became a stumbling block for someone else. I, I, I use it, okay, how about, how about gluttony? You can start putting in things that are stumbling blocks. Okay, how about, ready? Let me do this one. How about uh, hateful speech? You know what? I can, I can handle hateful speech. And so then you say some hateful speech to this other one, and it just goes, boom! And they're hating everyone. Okay? And so what you've done is you have become a stumbling block for someone else. There is nothing fun about being a stumbling block. In fact, I, I, I did not, uh, I, look, I saw it. Man, when I, I was going through some scriptures, a ton of scriptures. I'm almost done here, just so you know. As I was going through scriptures after, do you realize there are so many scriptures uh, uh, that, that are for us about how to live a great, great, awesome life the book of Proverbs is one of my favorite. It's like, bam, 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 in your face. Bam, 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 bam. So many people, so many people always look at the, they, they look at the, the, what I would say it's the hard side. Man, he talked about a broken heart crushes the spirit. Oh man, he talked about a broken spirit just saps the strength out of people. He, he talked about people that are suffering. He talked about people who, who are evil. He talked about people who are, who are stumbling blocks. Man, that's all he talked about. You missed the whole boat. Because you missed about praise, you missed about uh, happiness, you missed about cheerfulness, you missed about uh, uh, living life, you missed about uh, uh, the things that are rightfully yours. You missed all that because you just decided to dwell on what's that's the bad thing of the Bible. You know what? There's a way that guess what went that bad thing? A lot of good things. Which one are you going to choose? I want to have fun. <laughs> Ask Connie. I always want to have fun. Uh, and she came up to me and, 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 uh, and whispered uh, in my ear uh, that Cameron, well, if, I could, if I could, I'm going to say it wrong, but it was, I need to live here with the beach. Not with Papa. I mean, he connects it. I understand this. He connects it. I need to live here with the beach. 
And, and he had a plan. He even knew how he, anyone that was left behind, he had a plan. Seven years, I'll just Snapchat him. <laughs> he had a plan for his happiness at seven years old. You can live a fun, happy life. What steps are we choosing? I'm going to ask, uh, go ahead, Boomer, uh, Christian, and, and, and Pastor Mark, come on up. Yeah, you, go ahead, everybody go look, ready? We have some fun? Everybody look back. 10 to 12. What was Pastor thinking? Because <laughs> guess what? In my closing statements, it ain't going to be long. <laughs> See, now some of you are going, I got a cheerful heart now. Woohoo! <laughs> I got a happy face. This is so cool. I'm, please, I joke. Some of it is joking. That part right there, that's joking. The scriptures is not joking. I, I believe with all my heart you can have a happy, cheerful, uh, right life with God, and it is totally awesome. And guess what? God slides in. What, what I would say fun. God just slides in this pleasure of life that is so great. So in closing... Have fun! Exclamation point! Not right now, but you could go and have some laughter. You, you could probably have a better jig than I would ever have. <laughs> you might even have quiet time. You know what? Here's what I know. Some people enjoy that quiet time. They're, they're like, this is the best thing. Go. Have fun. Be godly. That's that reminder. Be godly in the fun that you are having. What kind of fun are you going to have today? Anybody ever thought that far out? Have you thought that far in advance? Some of you aren't going to have that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> but there's an end result. I'm just I'm joking around. I love joking around Pastor Mark. You know why? That, they're going to get in a car, <laughs> and they're going to drive. <laughs> I don't care. That part is never really, really, really fun. The end result is that destination. Are we there? We're almost there. We're almost, we are, you know, we are pulling in. Woohoo! Excitement. So there is joy. It just might take a little time to get to. What are you going to do? Are you looking out for today? What fun are you going to have? What kind of laughter is going to take place with you, your kids, with you or your grandkids, with you and your friends, or with those who you are about to connect with today, tomorrow, and the days ahead? What fun are you going to have? What laughter are you going to have? Because I've got to tell you what, you can have laughter in a car. You really can. I, I say sometimes that it's, I contradict myself a little. You can have fun in a car. It might take some, some brain power to really get it rolling, but you can really have some fun. Uh, uh, I can't. I used to call it slug bug. Anybody ever play, play that car game where you're, you, you see a certain, it was a Volkswagen, the old Volkswagen. That was a slug bug. You saw a slug bug? Guess what you did? Any guesses? Slug bug. In the, it's in, actually in the title. <laughs> you hit the person next to you. <laughs> you slug them. That's why you're always looking for a slug bug while you're traveling. There is one. What is the one that the, the, the PT kids Cruiser Brizzer? It's what? Wait, are you talking about PT Cruiser Brizzer? Oh, no. Oh, see, he, he, this is another generation. PT Cruiser Bruiser. Okay, it's in the title. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen? No, the kids do one where it's everything yellow. Bingo. It doesn't even match yellow. It's just uh, what? bingo. If they really look, bingo, and you'd get hit. I'm sorry, Pastor Mark. <laughs> you see something yellow, bingo. We're at the beach at, at, with you guys, and, and, and spirit would fly over us. That's what color that plane is. They don't even care if it's a car. Bingo. <laughs> As the yellow plane is flying over us, you can. Some of you are like, that doesn't sound like fun. Actually, when they're laughing, it is kind of fun. You just have to experience it. That's all. Or what are you going to experience that is fun this week? That's how I'm going to close out. We're about to sing um, one verse, a Christian home. 
talks about joy and peace. If I remember that last that verse correctly that we're going to sing, joy and peace. When I hear the word joy, I'm, I connect it with, with pleasure. I connect it with fun. I connect it with laughter. There's so much that goes along with joy. Thank you, God. How is your day going to go today? So as we, pr I'm going to pray, and uh, we're going to sing this song, and then we're just going to close out. That might be the funnest thing you have today. That's not a word, Pastor Mark, I know. <laughs> Ready? How is your heart today? I, I hope it's set to have pleasure with God. Pleasure with friends. Let's close. God, we thank you for this time together. As we are in this place, and as there are people that are even listening and watching, God, may our fun that we have be godly. May the pleasures that we have are godly. The joy that we have is godly. And in those things that seem so difficult, God, we ask an anointing of your spirit, the work of your Holy Spirit within our lives to help us through those things, to, to kind of like take us by the hand through every heartache, through every grieving, through, through every tear, all that takes place within our lives that seems so hard. Take our hand, God. Lead us into the joy of you. As we are about to leave this place, God, if there is someone here that doesn't know you and the joy of salvation, the joy of what you have placed as eternity within our hearts, I would, God, help them with the Holy Spirit to just a simple thing. God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, help me to be that ambassador of you starting now. Those of us that are following you, God, may we uh, always share the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, give us hope to burn up on Savior, whose Christ is dead and counts the glory. Where every child is taught his love and neighbor and gives their part as the to supply. How sweet to know that though their footsteps taper, our faithful Lord is walking. Amen. <laughs> yes. It is so good having each and every one of you here this morning. Um, I hope you are about to leave this place. I feel the joy, happiness, and looking what lies ahead with God. Um, like I said, just a reminder as we are about to leave that we are going to pause for one week with no Bible study um, at 4 p.m. We're not going to do the Tuesday, Thursday gathering um, this week either. And we're just going to um, take a little pause for this one week. God, as we leave this place, we are grateful that you are not only with us, but you are here for the steps that guide us throughout these doors. May our hearts be filled with joy. May, um, even as uh, was spoken earlier, God, uh, may we be the ones that are showing others the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.